to INS, the International News Service, your source for the most important weird news from across the globe, with news analyst Kevin Harrison, actor, comedian, and musician Mike Wiebe, and professional commentator Brian Camp. INS, the news you need. Is that where we're at? 77? This is episode Uh-oh. 77. Wow. Lucky 77. Dang. You know, if you roll two sevens in Vegas, you're probably playing Dungeons and Dragons. Cause... Do they have a sports betting Dungeons and Dragons type oh, situation? They should. Is there a way to make money off of that? Off D&D? Yeah. I mean, selling those That's expensive books. Deep. How many slots, you know? Yeah. <laughs> How many blue slots are you going to kill oh, in the first God. campaign? I put money on that. Welcome to Slod Talk, our new D&D podcast. Welcome to Slod Talk. So the dealer would be like the DM. So you have to really, DM, a yeah. strict rule following DM. Otherwise, they might get yeah. cut by the pit boss. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, that classic thing, though. The, uh, you know, the pit boss is watching the DM and the, uh, the, <laughs> The eye in the sky is watching the pit boss and wow. the man in the back mm-hmm. is watching the eye in the sky and the man in the eye is getting watched by the dealer what? player. And then it's all getting watched by one Hyman Rothstein. Also known as Tiamat. Tiamat. Yes. Yes. Robert, Robert De Niro is now named Tiamat. And Tiamat sees all, you know, we, we, they, they make Tiamat the, Five-headed dragon, uh, a very powerful creature in the Dungeons and Dragons mm-hmm. universe. I have a lot of um, empathy for a creature with five heads. It seems like there would be a lot of. Do the th- heads work together? Do they each have separate thought structures? Um, That's a good question. Because dragons are very like you know they're like smarter than people. I think they're supposed to be. Many times, yes. Many times, but also very greedy. <laughs> greedy they love gold there's nothing they love more than gold mm-hmm. they would because, do anything for gold yeah because they're gonna spend it i suppose wait <laughs> they wait, buy wait, things. wait so klondike bar or gold i mean i mean you can buy klondike bars right. gold so that's not how it works in the commercial yeah, i don't know why do dragons like gold so much what are they doing with it what if there's a dragon that you know what now a dragon if there's a dragon right now like bitcoin Oh yeah, it'll be yeah. all about think Bitcoin. How, think how furious those dragons would be, <laughs> or maybe that's the, like a red dragon. When <laughs> it crashes, they just live in <laughs> basements that are just full of servers mining bitcoins. <laughs> that's right, and they all like the, the color of the dragon determines which particular coin yeah, they which, are. Which cryptocurrency? You know? yeah, the which, blue which head. Is, they're using. The blue head shoots out Ethereum. But the yellow head <laughs> shoots out Shiba. I don't. I don't think I'm doing very good in the crypto market right now. Along well, with I thought you were else. way up. You were just buy, buy, buy. I was, but now I'm now. In the last I'm, six years, I put a lot. I mean, I put more money than I actually have. I borrowed money from some people that I <laughs> really shouldn't have borrowed money from. Like loan order, sharks. Well, I mean, what kind of interest rate? I mean, one of them said that the interest rate was the skin on your dick <laughs> <laughs> which i don't that even know implies that. that no matter what you're gonna pay yeah. the skin on your, like there's no way to not pay the skin on your dick well like the, that's, the, you don't win by not playing yep. you can only win if you play i feel like that hopefully i'll be real honest with them about how much i've lost uh-huh. and they'll they'll reward me for my honesty you know right they that's how that works they would have been real mad at you they yeah. would have done something they would you know been, yeah well it's pretty brave been, of you to come in there and tell them the truth yeah exactly i like it'd sure. be like it'd be one thing if i was like oh no 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 i can i'll get to your money now no, oh, 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 oh just give me 24 hours but i'm not going to do that i'm going to go i'm going to walk up i'm going to walk up to him and go like listen big tony sharky tony Mm-hmm. I do not have any of your money and I'm going to be, I'm going to be dead ass honest with you. Dead-ass. I don't know how I will ever get that money. And to be completely, totally frank, 
I do not think I ever will. It is more <laughs> than I've earned in my life. And I do not see myself with my work ethic. I do not mm-hmm. see myself ever earning that much money in order to pay you back, especially in order to pay you back and continue to facilitate my gambling problem, my alcohol <laughs> addiction, my drug addiction, my love of boutique Blu-rays, all the streaming services, because I can't live without all of them. And I just don't see that happening. So something's got to get dumped. And in my head, it is my debt to you. And I think they'll go like, you know what? I deal with all these low lives all day. And finally, somebody is honest with me about what they're doing. And I like the, I like the cut of your jib. Jeffrey, I go. My name's Mike. Well, surely his his henchmen at first will, you know. Let's let's mess this guy up, boss. Yeah, yeah. I gotta be prepared for that. No, he'll have to. He'll like hold on, fellas. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There's not a lot of honesty in this line of work. <laughs> but this kid, this kid did something that ain't never been done around here no more. Mm. He was honest with me. You know what? You're mm. okay. He might make me do a hit, which is fine. I mean, that's right. I've done that before. Right. I, I, well, you yeah. know, he'll probably give you some cadaver dick skin to yes, grasp back to on make up for what you've lost. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> I because there's a I thriving will, cadaver dick skin market. I think right now. Mm, yeah, I mean, mm. especially in the South. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I have a couple rules about who I will uh, pull a hit on. Uh-huh. No little kids. Very honorable. No women that have blonde hair. Yep. <laughs> Anything else is 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 game. Okay. Oh, and it. also some little kids. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the annoying ones. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you're just doing yourself a favor, right? You know, people. Let's just let's just say that there is a discipline problem in this country right now. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Spanking is not a four-letter word. Well, no, it's a lot longer than four letters. I think it's eight, right? Exactly. Exactly. It's twice as many. Well, but <laughs> that it, means yeah, it's that twice means as cool. Good. That means it's good word. For, the only <laughs> yeah. the only kind of the only kind of words that are bad have four letters. Any other word with any amount of letters is a good word. Good is four mm-hmm. letters. Good. Well, that's why people started saying bad because yeah. it was confusing yeah, yeah. that it was four letters. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's why the that's how words meaning shift wow. over time. Yeah. This is bad. We're bad. We we're bad. Mm-hmm. You bad. It Kevin. used to be the good boys club. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Switch it up. Yeah. We don't call. Oh. We don't say bad boys club because we dislike them. We I admire see. them and their commitment to the news. So it used to be the GBC. Yeah. What's the GBC? <laughs> it was the GBC before it was the BBC. Yeah. So that's a little bit about the English language. Oh. That's right. For yeah. international learners who may be trying to get a, trying to pick up a, for, a foreign language to them, <laughs> which would be English, that's a that's a, a hint for you on a good way to to, to choose your words and word mm-hmm. choice. Choose your words wisely when you want to enter a country, an English speaking country, and they say, "How are you doing?" Just say bad. bad. <laughs> say bad. Should they should they say bad? Is it good? Well, sure. That's what it. I mean, that's what it means. I mean, should they should they point that out just in case? No, 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 no. Because oh, okay. it, if it'll be Amer- it'll be an American border guard, so they'll understand. They'll immediately give you a high five and thank you for being so honest with them. That reminds me of my my Tommy Lee Jones impression. I've never done my Tommy Lee Jones impression. Oh wow, that's oh, exciting. That's... Okay, let's hear it. Uh, okay, well, I have to. It needs a partner. Okay, uh, yeah. which one of you would like to be the partner? I, I want to be the partner. Okay, so okay. I'll be Tommy Lee Jones, and you're another guy in a Tommy Lee Jones movie. And you have to ask me three questions. You have to ask me, have you ever killed anyone? Killed anyone? How many people did you kill? How many people and then did how did it make you feel? How did it make you feel? Okay. Okay, so you got that. So how many, uh, you, did you ever kill anyone? How many people did you kill? How did it make you feel? Okay. All right. You're a guy in the movie, and I'm Tommy Lee Jones. So let's go. Uh, did you ever kill anyone? Yep. How many people did you kill? A bunch. <laughs> And um, how how did that make you feel? Bad. <laughs> Thank you. It's uncanny, Mike. Are you, are, you, are you guys ready to get started here? Yeah. Well, well, sure. Yeah. Welcome to the International News Service. We're your hosts. I'm Kevin Harrison, along with... I'm Brian Camp. I'm Mike Weeby. Who's that? Who's that Nobody. guy over there? Oh, Nobody. Yeah. It's Mark. He's busy. 
Yeah, he's not here. Avoid. Yep. Well, Mark was sick, actually. He might have yeah. a valid excuse. He actually had the vid. Well, Why are you throwing up COVID? air quotes when you say sick? Oh, yeah. Which kind of sick was he? I, it's with a Q. <laughs> S-I-Q. <laughs> See, he's sick, another four letter word. He had a, he had a short name. Yep. Sick. He's sick in the way that, like, my tribal ink is. Oh, yeah. A long time ago, mm-hmm. we talked about a tech company developing an AI chatbot that could simulate your dead relatives so you could still talk to them and they could continue criticizing your life choices. Mm-hmm. Well, Amazon has taken that idea and given giving people something no one was asking for. A technology that would allow Alexa devices to mimic the voices of your dead relatives. Amazon's head scientist for Alexa revealed at a recent conference that the company is developing a virtual assistant that could speak with anyone's voice after being fed a few snippets of dialogue. He then added that you could even do this with your deceased relatives. The fact that this can be done with anyone's voice brings up a number of security issues. For example, in the first two Terminator movies, the Terminator kills people and then makes phone calls with those people's voices. So the possibility of deep fakes and Terminators is very high. This also raises intellectual property questions as many states recognize the right of people to control their own name and likeness. And a voice is a kind of likeness. So if you're uh, if you're simulating that without permission, then you might be breaking the law. And last... Do you really want your dead mom sending an alert telling you in a nagging voice that you need to order more toilet paper? Hello, I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. (laughs) I uh, am JFK, and I am here to say no more episodes of... Young Sheldon. <laughs> Guess what, guys? Those were not really those presidents. Whoa. Wait a minute. What? AFK was dead long before Young Sheldon. Nah, he might be on his way back. Uh, I think there are a number of internet groups that would disagree with you quite a bit. Well, they're wrong right. because they're stupid because they're fucking <laughs> hewing on nuts. Well, that's your. Yeah, we're not. Correct. We're not playing. It. We're are we no longer pretending that QAnon's a legitimate thing? Are we? <laughs> I feel like we do that um, too much. Well, yeah, I think that what we pissed QAnon off that one time, and I yeah, kind of missed those days. I heard QAnon made another post recently, though. Oh, yeah? That's oh. what I heard. I, I think it's, it's called a drop? A drop, yeah. Drop my kids off at the pool. <laughs> would you Would you like to exp- explain that phrase for our non-American listeners? Uh, yeah. Dropping it's your kids off at the pool is a colloquialism for using the bathroom. It's a it's a very highbrow colloquialism. Yeah. yeah, for making a bam bam in the in the poo potty. <laughs> yes, because yes. our toilets over here are floating bowls of water. In many other yes. countries, it not doesn't work like that. It's like a shelf. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. or it's just a hole in the ground that you squat over. Like it's if a you're hole, wearing like it's a, a hole in the ground, you've got a robe because you don't have that center crotch fabric that would get in the way. Yeah, what? So. You just straddle the hole and kind of squat down. Yeah. It's a very natural way to go. And it goes. (laughs) 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 I'm tired. What's the story about again? I forgot. <laughs> so you could you could program Alexa to talk oh, yeah, like yeah, your dead yeah, relatives. Yeah, dead, dead relatives. Yeah. Um, but here's my here's my question for Mike because it came up earlier, which yeah. is, oh. would you <laughs> would you program your Alexa to speak like Tommy Lee Jones with your perfect impression? That would be pretty cool. I mean, it would add a very like um, intensity to your day. That you might not get without it. Right. Alexa, do I need more bread? More bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So ask me some Alexa questions and I'll answer as Tommy oh, okay. Lee Jones. All right. Uh, Alexa, set a timer for five minutes. No. <laughs> uh, Alexa, dim the lights. What? <laughs> 
It's, I like that this is a slower Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was a slower one. Yeah. That was, they were still working out the bugs on that one. Do that one again. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Which, which uh, Alexa, dim the lights. Close your eyes. <laughs> it's, that's very Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> it's uncanny, Mike. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of freaking me out a little bit, to be quite honest. Mm-hmm. It's, I see I see your face. I'm yep. worried that the listener is going to think that we've somehow brought Tommy Lee Jones into the episode. Well, it's like we have an Alexa that's actually working. You mean, right. you mean a Texas resident Tommy Lee Jones who could easily be on the podcast? Well, yep. <laughs> oh, oh, did you enjoy making the hunter? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what was your favorite part about working with um, Indiana Jones? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> No, it just sounds like we have a soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you regret making a movie with James Garner? Oh yeah. Why would he do that? I think they're pals. Uh, weren't you roommates with uh, Al Gore? Son of a bitch. <laughs> was he roommates with Al Gore? I don't remember. I think that's yeah, the story. He was okay. with okay. Al Gore. Uh, for the international listeners, Al, international listeners, Al Gore, a former vice president and almost president of the United States. Yes, oh, and yes. probably, no, nah, I don't want to get into it, but maybe <laughs> maybe the elected president. There is a very yeah. hinky mm-hmm. counting sitch, but who knows? It, it, right. Either way, very, very close. You know, either way. Very close. Very, very close. A different, close enough that it's probably on one of the closest timelines to this one. How's that? A yeah. near enough thing that so that timeline time, timeline still sucks is what you're saying right okay like a Mandela timeline my I remember my dad when that election coming in he just like walked in the room and looked at the TV when they were still like counting stuff and he goes he's trying to steal this election and they just stormed out of the room <laughs> uh listeners see your dad as such a maniac <laughs> i know i know and he's not he's so totally not but he also but he also it just has the propensity for great anger very quickly <laughs> it's admirable almost I, I remember when you saw forrest gump with him and then he argued with you as to whether uh uh, what's the guy's name? That Gary Gary Sinise as to whether yeah Gary Sinise actually had legs or not, and your dad was adamant that he did not. No, that wasn't my dad. I remember you telling me that. I feel like he's telling he's dumbing down your dad in an unfair way. <laughs> yeah, no, because I don't think that the, I would remember that because I <laughs> that would be a fun <laughs> argument. <laughs> yes, that would be a very fun argument that I would remember. I think I remember hearing somebody have that argument. There's somebody in our friend circle. Maybe you told me that as though it were you then. No. Because you were like 20. You know, you would have, you know, you know, you weren't above making things up then. God, what, what is what these, what? these accusations, Kevin? Yeah. Not only, maybe you misremember who told you. Isn't that what? far no, more likely? I remember everything. That Mike made up a story. Because, I mean, I definitely am throwing hyperbole on my dad with for bits and stuff mm-hmm. while it's based in truth. And that he uh-huh. did really, I, he did right. really like look at the screen and go, he's going to steal this election. <laughs> 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 he just like walked in the room quietly, stood for a second, got real mad and left in one for one. <laughs> but I don't think that he. That was somebody else. I'm thinking of somebody else. Well, you've already you've already ass- assassinated Mike's character, so maybe we <laughs> yeah, should move on to the next. My story. job here is done. <laughs> well, yeah, there's stuff good. that I don't remember that I have to like cop to that Chris remembers me saying <laughs> we are standing in line for the Ned's Atomic Dustbin show in like 1991 or 92, oh, and I wow. go, I go, I go. He says, I said. Uh, Man, it'd be real good to get some ganja, but like completely <laughs> serious. And it's one of those things I'm like, ah, I probably did. I probably, yeah. like, I can't, like, I can't get out of that. Like, I'm like, no, that's, that lines up <laughs> with, uh, I, that lines Such up. An uncool yeah. way to ask for, ask yeah. for weed. Chris P. Chris P. He remembers, he remembers everything. He rem- he's a, he's a, got a very like photographic memory of things. It's weird how memory can be very tricky sometimes. There's occasional 
lines from movies that I, I it's probably actually I think I remember everything personally perfectly like everything that's ever yeah. happened I remember perfectly I have been the right. uh, the victim of the Mandela effect a few times though where I've crossed over into various dimensions back and forth <laughs> exactly <laughs> so our next story comes to us from the New York Times mm, paper mm. of records ah, the gray lady the old whistle tit <laughs> In 1969, NASA conducted an experiment to observe the effects of lunar material on terrestrial life. In other words, they took moon dust collected during the Apollo 11 mission and fed it to cockroaches for 28 days. Cool. And how, can you does it say how much they got paid to do this? The cockroaches? No, the fucking NASA scientists. $43 billion. Why we don't go to the moon anymore. They wasted all the money on these studies. Yeah. Good. Well, yeah, I'm glad I'm glad we haven't explored the heavens. But we know that moon dust is not good for cockroaches, I assume. Let's hear it. Let's find out. Well, you, okay, you, we'll you find out. We, we didn't get into that. So after NASA, after those 28 days where NASA fed moon dust to cockroaches, they shipped off the cockroaches to researchers for observation, including an entomologist at the University of Minnesota who determined moon dust had no effect on cockroaches. Eventually, the entomologist took the cockroaches home, and they stayed there until she died in 2007. The woman's daughter sold the cockroaches to a private buyer in 2010, and in late May 2022, they appeared as, quote, a one-of-a-kind Apollo 11 rarity, unquote, on an auction site. The roaches reached a price of $40,000 with the anticipation that they'd get a much higher price when live bidding began in late June. Nevertheless, the auction never happened because in a letter dated June 15th, NASA demanded an end to the auction stating, quote, no person, university or other entity has ever been given permission, unquote, to keep samples from the Apollo mission. That is a true thing. Yeah. You can't have stuff from legally, at least from the moon. But uh, what, they were wait, taken by the missions. Are the were the roaches are dead, right? Well, yeah. Roaches only live six to eight months. Were you an entomologist now? Yeah. I, lo- I looked it up. There were German cockroaches, and they have a lifespan of Ooh, six to eight months. Ooh. Those are the bad ones for those the international the ones. Yeah, That's why they were experimenting on Did you see on the them. worst ones? These <laughs> roaches are, ve- are very bad. Ooh. Oh, yes, Fraulein. Oh. These roaches. I so mm. crawl into your cupboard and scare you. That's right. Dr. Mecton will bring you several roaches. Dr. Iver Mechton. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, the, the, the German ones are the ones that will, they're hard to get rid of. They're, man, once you get those in your house, you got to you gotta get an exterminator. You burn quick. your goddamn house yeah, down. Yeah, just burn the house down. It's cheaper and easier. Are they really from Germany? I don't know how they name them. I don't, just, I don't know. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't know why they're to, called, because I know there are American cockroaches. They're German cockroaches. USA, are just, USA, USA. Those are just wood roaches, though. But I don't know how they get the different names. Yeah. American roaches don't want to be inside normally. They're just as scared as you are. They want to be free. The mm-hmm. auction house temporarily halted the auction, but said, quote, the government has a problem with legal provenance in this case because they can't, at this point, produce any of the documentation governing the transaction of providing the cockroaches to the doctor and the University of Minnesota, unquote. Moreover, it's unclear how these cockroaches could be samples from the Apollo mission since they'd been fed moon dust that had theoretically run through their systems before they were sent out. Also, the doctor looked through her mother's records and found a $100 case stub from NASA, but no contract saying who owned the roaches or what she could do with them. Apparently, NASA's record keeping is not very good. And in the past, a bag Neil Armstrong used to collect moon rocks was sold at auction. And so was a prototype of a lunar roving mod- uh, vehicle that was found in a scrapyard in Alabama. The auction house expects to relist the roaches very soon. I don't want the roaches. I'm just going <laughs> to say that. And I would yeah. like collecting. I would like to have some space shit in my house. That'd be awesome. Like, like what? Yeah. Whatever the remain, whatever the contents of uh, the toilet after people take space shits. <laughs> mm-hmm. I hear it's perfectly c- cylindrical. Yeah, oh, wow. I would like to drink some space piss. <laughs> um, 
Oh, it tastes like tang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd like a moon rock. I'd like an actual rock from the moon. I would definitely display that somewhere. Right. Um, yeah. Was it Gus Grissom who took a bunch of stuff back with him from the moon? Or he took stuff to the moon to be souvenirs? I don't know. I know he was on the moon. I think he died in one of the missions, right? Gus Grissom. Right. But I think yeah. maybe one of the first ones. At least at least the right stuff told me that's the case. Yeah. That's cool. That was the miniseries, would... right? He died in 1967. How do you sneak shit onto the... Like, what did he leave there? A soccer ball? One that... Now, as I recall, in the right stuff, he had like a lot of like pewter figurines um, that were space related, and I think he put them in his in his suit pockets, his space suit pockets, and then when he when he crashes into the sea or from the the reentry, yeah, um, I think I think in the mini series, like a couple of them get loose, and, and he gets in trouble. They try to blame a malfunction on the stuff he brought with him to the moon. I don't, I don't know. Know. It's, I have a very loose memory of a uh, miniseries that, that I'm sure we have listeners who have seen far more recently than I have. It's not even a miniseries. It was just a real long movie. It really? Yeah, the right stuff was a movie. Yeah, yeah it is a real long. It's like, yeah. like, is it Patton long or longer? I think it's longer. Uh, it's around the same. It's three and a half hours. Yeah, maybe? I tell you what, two hours really needs to be uh, the limit. It is three hours and 12 minutes. That is too long for a movie. Yeah. We're we are suckers to think that movies need to be that long. That's almost as long as a Marvel movie. Hour Whereas, and twenty minutes. Let's do it. Which makes it That's, twenty minutes longer than Patton. How long was the black hole? This is this is fascinating. Uh, listening here. And just you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep listing movies, Kevin. Um, the black hole was ninety eight minutes. Ooh, yeah, that's a good length. Robert that's Forster. How long a movie should be? Ernest Borgnine, Anthony Perkins, yeah. Maximilian Shell. Who did the voice of the the junkie robot? Slim Pickens. Slim Pickens. Oh yeah, it was. Who did the voice of the mean robot that creeped me out? I don't think no, he, he didn't. He speak. didn't talk. Yeah, he was. Scary. I think they, like they did like weightless angles of him. Yeah, he was just like this brooding. Well, I don't know if you remember the end of that movie is like fucking crazy yeah. where they go through yeah. the. They go through the black hole, but they like travel through hell and heaven, and they show that the guy is stuck in the the bad robot body in hell, and his just eyes are stuck in there, and it's really scary and creepy. Um, you know, for kids, it's a really slow movie, right? Isn't it? Really I mean, slow, it's a, yeah, yeah, but yeah, they a, made it. Uh-huh. They made it. In mar- it's a Disney. They made it marketed it for children as like, you know, what kids like bleak. It's pretty great, and, <laughs> and but didn't produce any souvenirs from the moon to be sold on Earth and get NASA or a, an auction house in trouble. What souvenir yeah. from the moon would you like, Brian? Um, a plaster cast of a footprint. That'd be kind of cool to go with your Bigfoot. Uh, I don't believe in Bigfoot. What? <laughs> you heard me. You heard me. You know what I said. Now I, I, I don't believe in Bigfoot as a being that would leave a footprint like that behind. I think that's, that's true. made up about Bigfoot. Because yeah. I think there's yeah. several of them and all the big feet together, it's their it's their their dimensional extra planar travel, I think is what we've mm. decided upon, right? Yeah, they do pro- proclivity for, of course, yes. laughter and yeah, mockery yeah. of demeaning the, the new yeah. human the human form. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> they can't get enough of it. I think if I was going to take uh, something from the moon, mm-hmm. I would t- take a bar of Nazi gold. <laughs> wow. Uh, you're, well, that's valuable. That's, that's, a, that's quite a tease. I would sell it. It's not like it's not because I think that Nazis are cool. I'd melt it. I'd <laughs> melt it, and then I'd mm-hmm. sell it. So you'd melt off the swastika, right? Oh, yeah. yeah good. Well, I think the second I touch it, the swastika would melt off. Would you? Would you oh. oh, your your purifying hands. Yeah. yeah, that's a good scene. Um, but then I would I would melt the whole thing, and I would, you know, I might. Here's what I would do: I would either sell it, or I would get the melted gold and make it into a dookie chain, <laughs> a big gold dookie chain. You guys know what I'm talking about? I, dookie I, chains. I, I I'd, I'd like to hear it explained. Yeah, for the, for the we well, know. they're just—I uh, mean, they're just giant gold chains that, and but the links are real big, mm-hmm. and the links look like little gold logs. Hence, <laughs> Dookie chain. 
That's a worthwhile dream. Oh, you know what I get? I get a gold eye of Agamotto from Doctor Strange <laughs> medallion. Would you keep it on a pedestal in your home with your other collectibles? No, I'd wear it all day and night. <laughs> well, uh, you know what? It would probably distract people from the real amulet. So they would they'd try to swipe that one. No, I mean, the Dookie chain Eye of Agamotto is a replica of the Doctor Strange Eye of Agamotto, which, based on what is funny. I just didn't expect to hear the, the Dookie chain Eye of Agamotto <laughs> replica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, I do, I do think that that would be a cool turn in the in the Doctor Strange movies if his if he made his Eye of Agamotto a Dookie chain, wow. right? Well, do we, do we think this lady or the? I'm, well, I guess it's her daughter. We don't know who the real seller is because the ultimate person who bought it from a garage sale or whatever is, is an unknown entity. Is that correct? She didn't reveal who it was, and then it wasn't clear. So the auction seller was anonymous or private or something. So we don't know. If the seller is the same person as the, who's the buyer, okay. And she she did say she sold it for considerably less than forty thousand dollars. Well, I would think so. See, how how can you prove that these are real or not? Is there? There's got to be a way to take that up to somebody and go like, hey, can you prove? Yeah, she's got the documentation that those were the ones from her mother, right? But the the problem is that like NASA probably sent them to her along with a check and a letter, just saying, give us a report and let us know. You know, if these right. what happens with these roaches uh, that we fed moon dust, and you know, so she wrote, she took the hundred bucks, she sent a report, and she was done. And now they're going, well, those are ours, and it's like, well, there's no chain of title that says that you're they're yours. It seems like it's your abandoned property. You never recalled them or anything. You know, I, you it, never put any conditions. I, this on is there. one of those many. I I like NASA. I'm a NASA fan. Oh yeah, and I like what NASA has done, and I like what they continue to do. And what it about is, with the lizard people? Well, that's a different conversation. It is upsetting that that I'm sure they never in a million years thought that somebody would turn one of the greatest achievements of, in the entire history of this country, maybe the greatest achievement, our travel to and return from the moon right. into a grubby little auction item. Like I'm sure they never thought somebody would try to profit that way off of Roaches. human achievement, unlike... Unlike before, there's never been anything quite like that in our history. And right. good for NASA for not for not thinking that they've got to get paperwork and everything and thinking, you know what? People are, are genuinely good people. But they were wrong. They were wrong because of a stinking entomologist, right? Mm. A non-science, a non-space scientist. And that's the story here. You're blaming this woman for not for neither destroying nor returning the dead roaches. She should have returned which them. Which were a part of history that she preserved. Well, how many did she lose? How much of that moon dust went up her nose? We'll never know. Yeah, she never got back question. to NASA. They were fed the moon dust before they were shipped to her. Well, I don't, I don't know. What to, I don't know what to think now. <laughs> Why did they need her to do anything? Why, wait, hold on. Yeah. Why did they eat dust? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Sort. Roaches don't eat dust. They eat like fucking leftover pizza, and when you when mm. they, they probably you sprinkled know. it on the leftover pizza, and then the roaches ate it all because they're not super discriminating. And that didn't kill them early. Are you sure they sprinkled it on pizza? Probably because that might be how we got the teenage mutant ninja turtles. Ooh, yeah, those aren't the roaches. Story. Those are turtles. Yeah, but there were mm -hmm. turtles that ate moon dust pizza. Right. This is all a TMNT cover. Then That's they were. What they, I, I'll tell you this. So. They didn't just do this experiment on roaches. They did it on other on what they called the 10 lower animals. And I didn't okay. I looked into it. I couldn't find other than just generally birds and then cockroach and then German cockroaches. I couldn't birds find what the cockroaches. other lower animals were hmm. but uh, or what the results of their experiment were. So theoretically, they could have tried this on turtles. And then the turtles turned into the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Thank you. And the rat that they tried it on turned into Splinter, Master Splinter. Yeah, and then the Foot Clan made the uh -huh. coolest hangout in history. Right. I'm pro Foot Clan. They to probably be honest with you. Oh yeah, they probably fit the moon dust to a, a rhinoceros and maybe a hippo. I think. I don't think those are and lower hippo, animals. No, and a warthog. Yeah, a warthog. That's right, a rhino <laughs> and, a, and a warthog. Yeah. No, but they didn't feed that. They smoked it so they could listen to oh. reggae, bebop, right. and rocksteady. Didn't one of them have a, 
a a dookie chain i feel like there probably were some some dookie chains in in the tmnt <laughs> universe so moving on to our arts and culture corner cue the arts and culture music oh and who's here no just for the arts and culture no. corner and for uh you better have podcast. a mask on yeah um and maybe he oh, had like a he seizure is. Ah, he looks like he's lost weight. <laughs> I don't think so. From the <laughs> oh, no. from Here. the quarantine, <laughs> the quarantine mm. zone sector B seven, the quarantine zone. <laughs> How are you feeling, Mark Ryan? Oh, I, I'm I'm better, just slowly better. I'm just Jeez. I'm just sort of tired of it at this point. So they put him on. Yeah. He told me they put him on steroids, and he's just been lifting furniture carrying yeah. around the house. Mm. <laughs> Would you say that you're sick and tired of being sick and tired? I'm tired. Yes. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> um, Is that from Good Good Times? Yeah, no, that's a, James, James, James. Yeah. <laughs> damn, 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 damn. <laughs> uh, oh my God. Where do you think you got the COVID from, Mark? Somewhere in Wisconsin. Okay, so you got it. I was gonna say that's my next question was how was how was the tour? Uh, it was really good. It was super fun. Cool. It was a real shitty way to cap it off. Come yeah. home with that, but yeah, it was great. Otherwise, I do. I guess I. I you know I. I wish we would have thought of it ahead of time because I was. I would have given you some alpha monkey immune booster. <laughs> Uh-huh. which is probably the most effective it's right. made from, it's it's made from rhinoceros semen <laughs> so it's it's really really potent dirt nap fest so your bands went up and played dirt nap fest what were some of the highlights oh, i yeah. had fomo i gotta be honest i saw dracus were gonna play a while back before like on the first and second reschedule and then it just kind of didn't work out to do this one but uh and then i was like yeah i'm fine with that i got enough going on but then i got i got a real fomo which means fear of masculine (laughs) odor (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, because i wanted to smell all you boys in the pit (laughs) there was a lot of boys oh you guys were all in the pit actually yeah middle-aged men mostly but oh yeah <laughs> at this point but like uh, a lot of dead skin they need a loofah off yeah i always assume that's what's going on it's like I a lot buy, of i need to buy a loofah man anyway uh the listener loofahs you gotta you gotta exfoliate that's established though we i think that's ins canon my favorite Our loofah of exfoliation. my favorite loofah of all loofah uh-huh. vandros <laughs> 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 oh. so so what were the highlights mark <laughs> i don't know let me think um i don't know just talk to people i haven't seen forever honestly that was for me the highlight <laughs> just seeing mm-hmm. a bunch of people i don't usually see um and who were the bands that were good it was fun seeing like bad sports and radioactivity and some you know friends bands and stuff like that especially uh there was a band from the uk called more kicks they were pretty good that's the one everybody keeps talking about i i need to check them out everybody yeah they were good they're they, they're just no. they're is so that, english is that more kicks like additional kicks or more kicks like a name johnny more kicks <laughs> it would kind of be cooler if it was a name just the guy yeah. yeah that sounds like that sounds like the last name the made-up last name of a Taekwondo teacher that teaches in a strip mall <laughs> in a small Texas Johnny more town. Kicks. Yeah, <laughs> Sensei Johnny. more kicks. <laughs> I've been practicing my board breaking. <laughs> That's good. That's good. You got to use. You got to use your chi or cha. But I, it did. This this did make me realize how out of shape I am. It's crazy how <laughs> out of shape I am compared oh, yeah? to where I used to be. Yeah. Man, my first show back. I mean, I'll tell you, my first show back, first gambler's show back. I, I like it. I was in paint. Like I made it like three songs, and I was just it was spent. And that was kind of the moment of like, all right, I got to get back in shape. And I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm totally not back in shape, but I have. Uh, d- I've taken steps and been working out and stuff a little bit to get uh, get closer to that because, like, ooh boy, that was man. It's mm-hmm. so easy to get sedentary after all this, uh, yeah, this pandemic. So both of y'all um, are crooners, 
mm-hmm. in your various outfits. Yeah. Uh, is it, do you like do your time. abs get really sore? Like, is it like a specific muscle that, oh, man, that's that a good atrophies? That part's not that hard. It's just running out of breath. Yeah. That oh. You just get winded. It's the cardio, the cardio of life. When we just... started doing this a year and a half ago, I would get winded reading these stories, and I'm so much better at it now. I don't think that's the same thing, Kevin. No, but I seriously like. I would. I could yeah. only. I could like get like a sentence per breath, and now it's like I'm running out of breath, and I can just keep pushing it. I get one sentence, and I vomit. <laughs> right. <laughs> My heart's only beat four times since we started this. So <laughs> that's because you're a ninja, though you can control it. That's right. So now we're going to move on to our arts and culture corner. If you would cue the yes, music, let's do it. So our arts and culture story uh, deals with something we haven't talked about in arts and culture yet, which is one mm. of my favorite things: food. Oh, oh. you, you foodie. say? Yeah, I did not know you were a foodie. Uh, since I didn't Mark know that about shown, you, either, Kevin. Shown up. I'm going to dedicate this story to him. Well, that, that, that's that got to feel good, Mark. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see what it is. <laughs> that's almost, right. It's almost worth getting sick for that. <laughs> it's all worthwhile. <laughs> this comes to us from CNN. Ah, uh, Clinton News Network. Yeah, real weird. We're hearing another Canadian yeah. story, by the way. Kevin, Great. go ahead. Canada's international. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, we get your justification. Please continue. <laughs> Canada is known for many unique foods, including poutine, the mixed drink known as the Caesar, and of course, ketchup chips. Can you tell me what the mixed drink known as the Caesar is? I've never heard of that. A Caesar is a Bloody Mary, but instead of tomato juice, they use Clamato. Okay. It's a, a Bloody... That's not... And I think, you know, you, I think they put... Canada's a known in. for that? Yeah, I think they put it... It was Because it, Clamato and uh, the Caesar were both invented in Canada. But I believe they put in a bean instead of uh, what is it they put in a Bloody Mary? Man, you put anything Olives. you want in a Bloody Mary. There's no Bloody Mary Olives, has no meat, rules. Celery. I think yeah, yeah, you put celery in a I Bloody mean, Mary. You put a bean famously in a celery, but like You're Bloody Marys bean. have no rules. You go nuts. Yeah. They have Bloody Pinto Mary bean. bars where you have like a whole buffet of stuff you can put in in there. Right. There's all kinds and, of crazy shit people put in there now. And for the listener. Uh, if you were to order a Bloody Mary at a bar, you will probably get side eye from the bartender because it's kind of a pain in the ass to make. No, they've go got some Zang at a time under when the counter. They got some Zang. Yeah, under well, that's the a shitty one. I that. always feel guilty ordering oh, one. Okay. If you order it before before two o'clock on a Saturday or Sunday, for, on a Saturday Sunday, okay. where you have to order it before eleven o'clock on a weekday. Okay. That's what sure. I say. So that is what I say. And 11 p.m. When I was a bartender and people would come in and to get a Bloody Mary, I would go, oh, somebody wants to have a BM. You want a big, you want a big BM? You're going to have a big BM? How about a spicy BM? How about, how about a, you want me to put, make that have your, you want your BM to be real stingy, like so spicy, it stings, a stingy, <laughs> spicy painful bm <laughs> and i would have a lot of fun with that but i don't know that it ever went over too well <laughs> right sometimes you gotta say things that just at least uh, make your day a little bit better i think canada has introduced all of these all of these unique foods and now perhaps a new offering is on the horizon the french's company largely known for its brand of yellow mustard has introduced the french sickle <laughs> a ketchup flavored popsicle. The press release said, quote, for every French sickle given away, Frenches will donate two meals to food banks, Canada to address food insecurity. The press release also said that the treat made from 100% Canadian tomatoes would be available at French's locations in Vancouver, Toronto, and Leamington until at least late June. Why don't they just give people food? Yeah. Well, they, they're giving away. You have to. You have to accept. They're giving you a popsicle, a French sickle, and then in exchange for taking that yeah. for free, they will donate two meals. Think how much more they could give away if they didn't make those shitty popsicles. They just gave people something. Just gave people food. I feel like this is the equivalent to like the pickle snow cone. The pickle snow cone. Yeah, pickle juice snow cone. You know how that was a thing for a while. Did you have that at Ice Paradise? Thank you for referencing us, Paradise. No, we did not have pickle juice. Yeah, we didn't have pickle juice there. That was a little bit early into the uh, the snow business. 
renaissance, what they call, that was called like, that was considered the bronze age. Right. Second wave snow cones. Snow conery, yeah. Really, yeah. ice paradise. Yeah. But it sounds like the f- the fact that if they give it to you and then they donate, it sounds like it's like a dare. Like where you have to eat something <laughs> gross. Like this is fear factor. It is gross. This yeah. is fear yeah. factor. You got to let a fucking, you got to let a scorpion take a shit in your mouth or whatever. And we'll give, give somebody some money. It, <laughs> well, you know, I know you have that that tomato allergy, so you couldn't possibly Jesus Christ. ever eat a. I do have a tomato yeah. allergy, and right. I, I wouldn't. You might just you might just implode. Might you might just burst into flames? No, I would have tomatoes. an asthma You're attack, you. and it would be a severe asthma <laughs> attack. And I'd have to shoot a jab an epipen into my own heart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Right, and that's is that the one weakness of the amulet? <laughs> is it tomato? Is that is that the amulet's kryptonite? I will be fine either way, but it will make me uncomfortable. The amulet doesn't stop uncomfortability. So this the, this deadly tomato allergy that you've had your whole life <laughs> really just makes you a little uncomfortable. You don't like the way they look; it makes you uncomfortable. The amulet, it, I haven't had it my whole life. When I was a kid, I didn't have it. That's what that was even scarier right. to be around. Oh, yeah. There's t- tomatoes all over the place. Wow. Yeah. I yeah. still managed to go out and live a life. I'm surprised you just didn't scream and rage. Never, never being able to go to a pizza party. <laughs> yeah. School would <laughs> give everyone pizza. It's really brave of you to make those Bloody Marys. Guess who doesn't get pizza? It's me. Yeah, we, we know. We've heard, we've mm-hmm. heard the story many times. Mm-hmm. I can... What? I, None with no tomato sauce? It's okay. I just won't eat. And that's what would happen. <laughs> I wouldn't eat. That's what you said all the time. It's okay. It's okay, guys. I'll do it without. I don't like eating. Can we go somewhere that no one really wants to go to so I don't have to look at tomatoes? They make me oh, uncomfortable. Everyone <laughs> wants to go to Chick-fil-A. But the ketchup's the best sauce. That's the one place that ketchup is really good. You Chick-fil-A. don't need ketchup at Chick-fil-A. Ketchup is gross. Yes! Right. <laughs> Bam! Uh, you know I agree. Bam! I agree. Ketchup is a snack. It's pretty gross. Ketchup is a... Anything is gross. So are you ready for Know Your Podcast? Yes, today on sometimes it like you know sometimes you're listening to a podcast and maybe the diverse news team has a even more all these white guys who are exactly the esoteric same age. versions of knowledge untouched by the average listener. So we like to do a little a little little segment that we call getting to know your podcast. <laughs> and on this week we are continuing. It's week five or four mm-hmm. of the Glenn A. Larsonissance, following the works of television creator Glenn A. Larson. <laughs> and this week we are getting into the 1982 to 1986 series Knight Rider. <laughs> <laughs> this would be good. Speaking of Alexa voices, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, the original Alexa voice. Uh, mm-hmm. Knight Rider is a show that is about a modern day crime fighter with the help of a technologically advanced, artificially intelligent automobile named Kit, which <laughs> stands for anyone know Knight Industries three thousand. 2000, Night Industries 2000. I was on the next model. And Kit's a pretty like indestructible uh, car because there's a, it's coded well. It's got a real (laughs) good coding. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's usually, you know, so there's this guy and his name was Michael Winslow. Winslow. Anyway, he got, they faked his desk and they gave him plastic surgery to look like David Hasselhoff and he became Michael Knight. Speaking of German and cockroaches. He works for a company called Flag. Uh-huh. And Flag stands for what the heck? Fuck, I should have wrote that down. I'm glad we were prepared for this section. You know, listen. <laughs> it's like this is when you're exploring yeah, there's a new territory like like the uh-huh. Larsana verse. Larsana yeah. Sons. Oh, sorry. Then we're in a time period. If you're, when you're in a time period like the other Sonnesons, uh-huh. you know, a lot of it's just, it's, you, you got to probe, you got to be careful, you got to mm-hmm. get explore a little bit. And it's mm-hmm. not always real smooth, uh-huh. Kevin. Discovery was, isn't a smooth process. Real okay. discovery, real science, like what we're doing, mm-hmm. takes mm-hmm. effort. This isn't science. And it takes commitment. It is. Of course it is. Science. It's social it's, science. It's journalism. It's mm-hmm. social science. Socialism. This is, so, no, it's social science. Oh, not in my America. <laughs> 
<laughs> so anyway, so uh, Michael Knight, he, he, they, yeah. they, they fake his ass, they give him, and he becomes a, a crime fighter for a, a government organization called Flag. Okay. And so he's got this uh, really hip little car, and he just kind of goes around having adventures. Now, the cool thing about this car, it's mm -hmm. a uh, Corvette or a Camaro. No, it's a Trans Am. It's a Trans Am. Trans -Am. It's a Trans Am. Mm -hmm. And it can talk. And it can drive itself talk? and do a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, it can talk. And the voice is done by William Daniels, who played uh, Higgins in Magnum P.I. <laughs> Magnum P.I. <laughs> Magnum P.I. I'm a little tired, was you that, guys. Was that Higgins? <laughs> that was Higgins, yes. Michael. Yes, Michael. He also played Mr. Feeney in Boy Meets World. <laughs> That's, is that the same person? Same guy. Wow. I'm having a real butterfly effect moment because I do not... In my head, I don't see. You mean Mandela effect? Mr. No, I don't see Mr. Feeney and Higgins. It's the same guy. They're really the oh, same no, guy. No, it's not. Yeah, it's not Higgins. It's uh, it was the doctor in St. Elsewhere. That's what I thought. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Crisis averted. Universe aligned. That's perfect. Maybe I need to do the St. <laughs> Elsewhere universe at some oh, point. Oh, that, that will take years, man. I've got a list and it's like over 400 shows. St. Elsewhere revealed because a bunch of other shows are credited as being part of in the same universe as right. St. Elsewhere. And at the end of St. Elsewhere, the final episode, it reveals that the entire show was all made up in the mind of an autistic boy staring at a snow globe. It's called the Tommy mm. Westfall universe. And Tommy West, it, it has 419 shows in its multiverse. And I don't yeah, think I this, I don't think the list I have includes the Simpsons. But just like that Bruce Willis movie, Twelve Monkeys. No, I think it's called Mercury Rising. <laughs> Die Hard. <laughs> That's the most inside impenetrable joke. I I just want to point out I don't understand. That was this. just for me. The list that here. was just for me, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm very pleased. <laughs> with it just it was this obscure obscure uh mm -hmm. bruce willis movie where he's saving an autistic kid i don't even know that's i barely even remember that fact <laughs> anyway back to knight rider so they yes. drive around it's it it's just the dumbest show in here it's so it's so aggressively stupid but it was huge it was i mean and it, it spawned it spawned uh, spin-off shows. It spawned video games. It spawned merch on top of merch. Eventually, they started introducing a new arch villain to Kit, and it was a car named Car K A R R. <laughs> yep. Who drove it? Lots of duels. Um, car drove itself. It was AI. It was, and it was voiced by Car. Was voiced by Peter Cullen, who was famous oh. for voicing another vehicle I by know. the name of Optimus Prime <laughs> of Transformers fame. And flag, uh, flag yes. by the way, means foundation for law and government. Just technically, there's Good. two Fs in flag. Anyway, so it's, a, you know, Michael Knight's getting into adventures. It's kind of a just yeah, poor man's mulleted James Bond <laughs> set exclusively in Southern California. A lot of desert and scenes, him, right? A lot of desert scenes, a lot of a lot of just up and down the coast. They were shooting stuff. They, I remember they later come up with uh, this around season. So it did uh, how many seasons? That's 82, 83, 84, 85, 86. And, and the, like the second, the last two seasons, they made, they upgraded Kit to where when they would push a button, little wings would come out on him and little all these little devices would kind of raise up out of it and it, he would go even faster and to show him going faster, they would just speed up the film. <laughs> and, uh, but so, and then after it came down, they, they actually like tried to reboot it a couple times. They did, uh, they did a couple TV movies after it was done in 86. They would, they like in 90 or in 86, they did one. And then in, 97 they did a reboot called team night rider and oh, it was yeah. just like a whole group of folks did it and then they did a totally new uh remake that followed uh 
Michael, Mike Tresor, the estranged son of Michael Knight. He takes up mm. the mantle of the flag driver. driver. And uh, that kit was voiced by a, a actor who doesn't actually have a voice anymore. Val Kilmer? Val Kilmer. Whoa. Iceman himself. Whoa. I just, I was guessing. And uh, right now Man. they're trying to do... But, I, you know, I don't know, like, just taking a step back, like, how to describe the show to a young... sounds like a robot now, right? Yeah, he does actually sound more like a robot. <laughs> okay. I don't think he can even really talk now. They had to, like, uh, AI uh, his voice in Top Gun Part 2. Probably um, Amazon the, did it for him. You know, it, it's, a, it's a show that definitely, like, leads right up into how stupid Baywatch is. Like, it. wait, what was your joke? I think it was mean. No, no it wasn't mean at all. No, not. I just mentioned that they probably they probably got Amazon to do his voice for the movie. So. <laughs> <laughs> that may be. That's because you know they've been doing it for Tommy Lee Jones lately. I, I hear. <laughs> I hear. I wonder. Do you think he would ever voice a car? I think it, it would be nice to hear him voice. Mm-hmm. You know, he, it would be a truck. It'd be like a robotic truck. Ooh, like Goliath. Yes, a lot like mm-hmm. Goliath. Driven by evil Michael Knight. I suppose that could oh. be. Maybe he looks exactly like Michael Knight, but has a goatee. Little goatee. <laughs> and more rings on his fingers, as I recall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It I mean, I remember there was a there was a, a Bloom County comic, which was a comic strip back in the day that was very popular but kind of topical, a little bit more adult than say your Garfield, who, you know, we know what Garfield does. And I remember it was Binkley, the character was, gonna, I was going to go around and tell uncomfortable truths to people. And he went to uh, the Steve Dallas character and just goes, in truth, Knight Rider is a show for children. And Steve Dallas is like, what? No, it can't be. <laughs> but it is it is kind of insane to think that a primetime show could be that aggressively stupid. Like yeah. it is. Oh, yeah. It is without without merit and how dumb and how repetitive it is that yeah. that it was on for five seasons and it was just the same thing every week. Yeah. I, I mean, I think of that in terms of eighties TV, my parents were very, I mean, are, cause they're still alive, are very intelligent people, college educated, and they loved the dumbest TV that was basically made for eight year olds. And I'm glad because I got to watch those shows. Did you much. not like Knight Rider? Yeah. But, but you were eight, but we were yeah, I eight. Was, we were eight, so we, you know, we were supposed to love them. My parents, though, it's like, oh, it's it's seven forty five. We got to get home quick to watch Night Rider. Finish your meal in the car. Maybe they were just having fun with their kid, and they were trying to no, share something like that him. you enjoy. They did not like him. You shut up no. when kid is talking. That's all I ever heard. I have a question. Um, so I'll, most of Glenn A. Larson's shows were spinoffs or some kind of like ripoff of some pop culture thing. Uh, so what would you say that this is a, a rip off of? I mean, I think it was an American James Bond. James Bond has a cool car. And then just, and then on top of that, just like, well, we need the, you know, it was, I, it was also the culmination, I believe of the car TV show because there were, <laughs> There were just show after show. I, and I think this even started with movies with like Smokey Oops. and the Bandit and the Cannonball Run, all the Hal Needham movies, which were just right. just car, just car chase movies. And right. at the time, you got to think, too, like CGI effects were not around yet. Um, practical monster effects were only for big budget movies for the most part. So the, the, the easiest to pull off effect that people were, we forget we're really excited by is cars, cars breaking into stuff, cars going fast. I mean, at the end of the day, it still holds true. Like fast and the furious is one of the biggest movie franchises of the last, you know, it's definitely the, it's the biggest original IP film franchise. Wouldn't you say, but wouldn't you say that's because of the relationships in the movie? (laughs) <laughs> you mean how they treat each other? All those friends? Right. Yeah. Family. It's about yeah. family. Yeah. Well, I think that goes into people are so all of, you know, they like the Olive Garden so much that they just love. But I do think, though, that like that is like the, 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 
the last vestige of when people and they, they can't even maintain it there, but there was a time when the, you know, of special effects were at such a rudimentary level that, you know, jumping a car over semi or over whatever, seeing a car wreck in slow motion was a big fucking deal. Right. And now audiences are just pretty, pretty bored by that. But like right. so many of these shows were just a culmination of until we started kind of like the show started centering more and more on the guy. This is, these are the guys and this is car. This is his car. Look at the, the general Lee, but it's about the two guys. And then, and uh, you know, Magnum PI has the cool cars, all the, all the, you know, there's a, there was a singular vehicle for all these, all these people. And then finally we get a show where at the end of the day, the star is the car. The car is, is, is the end all be all of the show. Um, okay. I think it just, you know, and then once we got to where we could start showing stuff, it looked a little bit cooler than that. We kind of phased out of the the car thing, and then we you start seeing more titties on TV too, which <laughs> that was part of it. I mean, you know, by the time by the time Baywatch came around, it was like, why we don't need to we don't need to we need to wreck these cars. We just want to wreck that pussy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know that there was you know at, at some point Baywatch was just Night Rider without all the you're saving so much money by not wrecking cars you just need to okay. get them them ladies right. greased up oh and the men too everybody <laughs> like looking at their hot bods as well mm -hmm. something for hey, everybody do you think do you think knight rider was before or after the video game spy hunter because the whole driving into the back of the pit of the semi truck yeah. was a big part of knight rider and it was also a big part of spy hunter i can't imagine whoever was for whoever was second wasn't aware of the first Oh, Knight Rider started in 82. There's no way Spy Hunter is older than 82. Spy Hunter released Ooh, in 1983. Ah. Yeah, but that means it would have been in development for many years beforehand. <laughs> Industrial espionage. Mm -hmm. That sounds like the work of Carr. <laughs> <laughs> and in a, in, a, in a, let's wrap it all, all up. The, this show it was the culmination of the car show. Like I said, there's no vestige of the car show except for Fast and the Furious. But right now, it's been announced that Machinima, Yo Mama, and NBC Universal brand development are developing a Knight Rider reboot with Justin Lin producing and directing the series. Justin Lin, uh -huh. famous for helming the Fast and the Furious Whoa. series. I rest my motherfucking case. Weirdly confrontational. But <laughs> put that in your corn cob pipe and smoke it. Well, what a what another riveting journey through the Larsonaissance. A Larsonaissance. That wraps up another week of the International News Service. Find us across social media at International News Pod. Email us at internationalnewspod at gmail.com. Please start a petition and letter writing campaign demanding that Amazon give consumers what they really want, the voice of the INS hosts on every Alexa device. Check out the INS merch store at Redbubble and our Patreon. We'll see you next week. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to the International News Service. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. INS the news you need.